how did architecture evolve in Cuba from eclecticism to modernism? What we have was a communication, communication explosion with the architects all over the world, with Corbusier in France, Oscar Niemeyer in Brazil, and we have several magazines with pictures of the buildings all over the world. There was a shock because there were architects who had studied abroad or you had very important architects of the world coming to do projects in Havana. We had a tremendous influx of information about modern architecture from all over the world coming into Havana. And remember that we were not looking back, we were looking forward. We had also excellent structural engineers who had the most modern systems that could be applied to the buildings. And that's how the Foxa building was built as still the largest residential project made out of reinforced concrete in the world. Uh, there was no looking back. Uh, there was a small group of architects who wanted to create a human architecture by using the patio, the stained glass, the persiana, uh, uh, the wooden blinds. But there was no way that we could do that if we were doing a multi-story. Was there a transition, like from eclecticism uh, through uh, Art Nouveau and Art Deco before going into modernism? Because I remember some extraordinary buildings in Art Deco that are still there today, but Art Deco is not modernism. No, but uh, we were moving very fast. We, it went through uh, the different Faces, uh, we didn't even look back. Uh, I don't remember any any feeling that we needed to copy things that have been done before. Uh, we, we just looked forward, and it was a challenge to move on uncharted territory. Uh, what did you think about uh, the eclectic architecture in Cuba when you were a student? How did you see those buildings? How did you visualize them? Remember, the architects need to have a very, very, very powerful imagination for creation. And, uh, everybody wants to hear if it is a house, it needs to be different to whatever you had designed before, or it's been designed before. And we we uh, we enjoy what we were doing, and we were being, being uh, very very happy with uh, uh, with the motivations that give you the architecture all over. When you were walking through the portals in Havana, and you were under those magnificent buildings that everybody treasures now, and that are decaying right now, what did you think when you were looking at those columns and the Friezes and the facades. That what they did was part of the past. And they were done by the architect that at that time lived in an environment that promotes that type of architecture. But when you are in a modern a, a society and in a, in, a, in, a, in a world that is moving at the velocity that we are moving on, we need to be in a Hollywood time designing accordingly with that. You cannot go to the past to decide because you don't feel and you are not able to understand how they design and how they arrive to that. What were the uh, students at the time uh, looking forward to, like uh, design? Who were the architects that they were looking at in the world? 
So they were really looking at those architects like an inspiration source. Right, that's the, the way that, uh, how architecture and how the imagination works. I remember that uh, in my time, they were looking towards uh, Gropius, which was rather old, and uh, Niemeyer, and Van der Rohe. Well, you mentioned uh, uh, Brazil. Niemeyer mm -hmm. was definitely a, 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 an acting to follow. Le Corbusier, how about Le, Le Corbusier? Corbusier what did you think about Frank Lloyd Wright? In his time, he was tremendous, the best of, the, uh, of his epoch. But he was really not a very modernist architect when he started. Well, but you, you evolution as, 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 you, as you progress in architecture, like everything in life. Your, your, your thinking changed. 